All right, watch the video. Got the cue to pop within 30 seconds for Alexander, the burden of the sun. I think it was within like 10 seconds actually, but then, yeah. A platform is being lowered down and we are on it. Again, there's a lot of pistons, moving, like big pistons moving up and down. And there's kind of a four-legged kind of spider mech middle of this large circular room. And this is a an interesting fight. Alright. So tanks going to face them away as usual. Has a like a kind of this immediate cast missile thing. Mega beam, just get out of it. Targets a random party in there. Perpetual, Perpetual Ray is a tank buster of sorts. Does about half their health. And it gives a stack of vulnerability, it looks like. But yeah, his um, kind of normal tank attack is just missiles that are just like immediate cast. He said execution. We gotta target these balls. Steam regulator. So we can watch out for a big old circle alien. There's a beam that. Oh, luckily nobody got hit by somehow. Crazy. Perpetual ray. Tank back up here. You don't need the cure two ever, my guy. We got it. Oh, that's me. That wasn't cure two. Ever. All right, he'll leave and summon those um, two of those mechs that we had to fight in the last one, and they will have all of their abilities. You want to fight them separate from each other, but these guys are dumb. Oh god! I'm gonna spread out, drop this ice somewhere where hopefully it's not gonna hurt anybody. Okay, that's gonna be a single mech arm shot that I wanna make sure doesn't hit me. We got ice on me again, I'm gonna put it in the corner over here. There are no water spouts you have to freeze now. So. But yeah, stay out of circles, avoid the beam. Now the other two mechs have popped down. These guys definitely want to be tanked apart from each other according to the guide that I watched because Swindler does a heck of a lot more damage. And okay, I'm going to do the opposite. So I got an... Oh, so I want to be on, on high ground. Okay, vulnerable to damage while on low ground. That's what I did wrong. I didn't read it closely enough. Let's get me a heal. I haven't done that at all today. Spread out, buddy. Or just explode your friends. That's cool. Oh shit. It's a mech. Ha! So, just like in the other fight, they'll summon like these ghost mechs that are gonna rush the field. As the four mechs and the big kind of spider mech all kind of combine each other, the four mechs become arms and legs. They all get shoved back. Now we got brute justice, a big old thick mech dude. Alright, double rocket punch. Just one shot our tank. Oh shit, group up mechanic, I failed. Sorry guys. Our gunbreaker, literally the most mobile class in the game. Just stood in like most of that laser, so that was fun. Alright. Why 
get our tank in one shot like that? guy's got double laser arms, so I want to not be in the way of that. Or maybe I do, because he wanted to soak it last time. I want to be down. Yeah, I want to be on low ground. Can't reach you. Like a, kinda looks like Alexander, honestly, in a lot of ways. False of them. Exactly like Alexander, kinda more. Well, one of the colors are similar to what the actual Alexander looks like. I'm not positive. Alright, let's see what kind of after battle stuff we get here. Midas. Maybe it is only eight. AE one through eight. Right. So let's jump into the exit. We should get a cutscene, I would think. Yeah. The platform is lowering. We're kind of into the core. Uh, Mide and, and myself. The Maiden Knot is what this is called. Bigs and Wedge on another elevator. They're all pumped. We approach the giant red core that's got like flashing yellow lights. The second core, I do believe. Once that's out of commission, Alexander won't be going anywhere. Mide nods. Climbs the core. Climbs this one as well, like she did the first one. Diane. Would that I could see you just once more. Diane, D A Y A N, Diane. Dayan. She hesitates for a second. Farewell, my love. Her eyes are very blue. The sun. Yeah, it is Iris. Iris is the colorful part, and then the other black parts are here. Once again, the giant core, like the metal part opens up and then the core in the side stops spinning. It's also like a bunch of rings that form a sphere, both vertically and then horizontally. Here's the leader of the Goblin Illuminati. You! Says Mide. Oh yeah, Round Rocks is nowhere to be found so far. Wow, quite a few more Goblin-like commandos on Bat wings kind of fly up to join the fray. Too frightened to face us alone, I see. Not that I blame you. We all know what Mercy did to you last time, says Wedge. To usher in future that has been writ, even strongest Gobby must sometimes pretend to be weak and let enemies win. Oh, pretending were you, and I suppose losing this, this core was all part of your plan. Don't make me laugh. You know as much about the future as we do. It's the best bigs I can do, I think. 
Quick thinks knows all. For example, Quick thinks knows one among Uplanders carries true fragment of Enigma Codex. Mide has a bad poker face. It seems the game is up, Biggs. There's no hiding the truth from Quick Thinks. Very well, I admit it. I have the fragment, but I won't be handing it over to the likes of you. And Wedge runs, escaping the grasp of several gobbies, leading them away. Oi, Wedge, didn't you hear him? He knows all. And Biggs runs another way? Which means he knows that what you're carrying is a worthless rock, while I've got the genuine article tucked away in me small clothes. A couple of the gobbies, actually all the gobbies run his way instead. And then Wedge waves again, they run his way. <laughs> kind of ping-ponging him. It's cute. You and Mide, however, take one of the platforms back up to the top. Quick thinks already knows conclusion of Uplander's childish games. His platform is moving over underneath yours. I think he might be trying to follow. Yep. He's coming for me. Eh? What's he waiting for? Says Biggs. Long ago was outcome decided. Uplanders think they are victorious, but luck is no friend to them today. And... I guess the platform jams for a second. Mide starts to fall. The rock leaves her hands. It starts to fall. Uh, she just falls on the platform. The rock falls down right next to the cat onto Quick Thinks' platform. Wedge said, What? And now Enigma Codex belongs to Illuminati. All pieces fall into our hands. The cat's just staring at it. <laughs> Goblins all kind of leap up and then soar down on their goblin wings. And <clears throat> fade to black. Quick thinks probably <clears throat> sabotage the platform. <clears throat> as far as I can make out, the thing's in good work and order. No damage, no signs of tampering. I can only think it was an energy fluctuation that did it. Just bad luck. Bad luck? You're saying it was pure chance the platform stopped at that exact moment? Then what about Quick Thinks? There is no way he could have predicted something like that. The odds would be infinitesimal. Mide is looking kind of like, what is going on here? Well, however he did it, the fact remains that he did. But, but that doesn't mean we have to stand for it. When someone takes something from you, you just have to take it back. You nod to Mide. It's go time. Saved you place at the table. All right. Let us exit. Can I change? Yes. Okay. Before I freaking forget. Leave the Maiden not. I believe we want to do that. Yeah. Yes, I do. Right, we'll talk to Backwards here. Do Uplanders forget something? Matters are too urgent for such foolish doings. Can you explain what happened? What? Tongue flaps of uh, tongue flaps of Uplander make Backwards almost to laugh. Uplander claims already to have stopped Core and lost Fragment to Quick Things. <laughs> Look here, Uplander. Backwards has brain case like Steel Trap, catching all heard things, all seen things, and he saw Uplanders leave but a few moments ago. Backrix senses something is amiss. Is there a time dilation maybe going on here? Alright, so we got Burden of the Sun. I don't know why they're named like this. Arm and Cuff makes sense. Burden? I'm not so sure. Whatever. One Step Behind is done now. Backrix will talk to you. A Gob in the Machine. <laughs> God in the Machine. Backrix is certain that Uplanders left for Metal Giant only moments before returning. He watches Uplanders disappear over Horizon with own two eyes. But it is impossible to return so soon if Uplanders' tale is true. Why Treasure Hunter also makes such claims, Backrix does not know. 
Go, Uplander, trade tongue flaps with Mide, and together think of explanation. Time dilation. Time is different in Alexander for some reason. Somehow. Have you been able to make any sense of Bakrix's account? According to his version of events, we would scarcely have had time to reach the core, much less shut it down. But we were all there. We all know what happened. And then, discussion. Oh, no, you explain what you think. Oh, are you sure he's not just confused? Maybe he got lost in all that data of his and forgot the time. I'm afraid not. That is, unless the goblin standing watch near Alexander was also confused, his reports corroborate Brat Backrix's. No, something else is going on here. I'm certain of it. The question is, what? If we assume for a moment that the goblin's accounts are true, then hardly any time has passed since we had entered the barrier around Alexander. Mide thinks... Time... stopped? Impossible. Impossible? You mean like quick things predicting exactly what was going to happen in the core room? I hate to say it, but maybe he wasn't talking out of his arse. If time doesn't work the same in there, maybe he saw the future. Uh, that could be it. Hmm. There may be another explanation for that. There is a device deep within Alexander capable of performing complex mathematical calculations. It is not outside the realm of possibility that it can be used to predict the outcome of simple events. Using mathematics to predict the future? Now, even if I could believe that, it wouldn't explain this business with Backricks. Biggs is right. Perhaps the presence of the primal somehow disrupted the flow of time within the barrier. It's only a theory, of course, and a far-fetched one at that, but it might go some way towards explaining recent events. To be clear, you are implying that the Illuminati are aware of this temporal disruption and have been using it to somehow gaze into the future? Very well. If you are willing to accept that, why not go further? Might it not be the case that they have found a way to bend time to their will? By moving back and forth in time, the Illuminati could effectively manipulate the present however they saw fit. They would ever remain one step ahead of us, our every effort doomed to fail from the first. Now that's a, slobbering theory, a sobering theory, slobbering, but it's still only a theory, right? There's no point panicking just yet. Wedge, give the chief a call on your link pearl. Why don't you? If anyone knows how to untangle this knot, it's him. Chief, it's me. It's about Alexander. We've noticed something strange about time inside the primal. What? No, not our time inside the primal. The time. I mean, time itself. Chief, it might be best if you just came here. Aye, aye. We'll await your arri arrival. And we wait. Destination unknown. Ruby, 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 so ho. Right. Cutscene time. Sid and Yishtola arrive. Is that a, hard, a heated debate I hear? Boys, you started without me. Now, what was it that we, what was that you were saying over the Link Pearl? Something about running out of time? Sid insisted that I accompany him, though I would have I would have come ever had he. Wow, though I would have come even had he not. Matters have taken a turn for the worse, I gather. The ground begins to shake. Just for a second. You can say that again, says Sid. He'll be the more human, uh, like human, normal human that I can get. Not accented. <laughs> Not that my accents are very distinguished anyway. We all rush toward the shield with Alexander still underneath it. Seemingly not operating. I mean, alive-ish, whatever. The etheric fluctuations are akin to those I observed shortly before the Primal's awakening. In the absence of a functioning core, its form is dissipating, albeit slowly. Her eyes really are kind of weird. They're very pale. Yistola, mind you. Uh, so, Yistola, would you mind lending me your goggles for a moment? It can't hurt to have a second opinion. She does just that. He puts the goofy things on. And, like, venting from Alexander is this... Oh, and it stopped. And now it's reversing on itself. 
Like there was this gas venting. It stopped and then reversed. What in the seven hells? The aether pouring from the primal is flowing backwards as if time were passing in reverse. That cannot be. Such a phenomenon is wholly without precedent. Knowing so little of this primal's capabilities, however, it would be remiss to discount the possibility outright. It is as we fear, then, at this very moment, Alexander could be undoing our efforts to shut down its cores. All of our labors will have been for naught. Ah, the treasure hunter of whom we have heard so much. You seem unperturbed by our, out by our outlandish speculations. Was this perchance the subject of Wedge's communication? Everybody nods. He does a little dance. Gods help us. If there's any truth to this, it wouldn't matter how many cores we disable. The Illuminati will simply undo any damage we cause. Then what do we do, Chief? How do we even begin to fight something like that? Everybody gets into their deep thought stance. Although yours looks weird. <laughs> You look over to Mide, who seems kind of transfixed. To erase the past, to return to a clean state, clean slight, could Diane have known? D-A-Y-N, D-A-Y-A-N, Diane. Sounds like Diane, I hate, I hate, I don't want it to sound like Diane. Hey Diane, Diane. I'm gonna go with Diane. There's a goblin sitting on a chair with like this big old spiky th thing above it. That Looks like it could wrap around its head and suck out its brain. There's a control room of sorts with what looks like a piece together that black cone from Mide's past. It looks like it's been pieced together. It's not like uniform and smooth like the cone previously was. A lot of goblins are kind of standing around looking at it. Other goblins are, you know, working some machines and controls. One goblin rushes up a ramp. Preparations for restoration of Enigma, Enigma Codex are complete. Calculations show margin of error for future readings is 0.03%. Foolish, Gobby. When future is decided, there is no error. There is no failure. Listen well, Chosen of Illuminati. At last, all peace... Oh, that's Round Rocks in the chair. Oh, that's sad. Hopefully she's okay. All pieces are in place. No longer must wise suffer foolishness of unwise. Time has come back. Time has come to backstrike. Inferiors will pay. Will make way for perfect world or die. Now restore Enigma Codex. All right. One of the gobbies approaches the kind of deformed cone. Holds out his hand and a piece. A stone drifts from his hand to the cone, and it becomes a beautiful, just perfectly formed black cone again. And it directs its energy toward the chair that Round Rock is sitting in, and Round Rock seems to kind of awaken. And then it drags the energy from that, from the cone, straight up into this like whirling five-pointed kind of um, ninja kind of star, curved star that gives, like, uh, of um, computer optics in, in the ceiling that just kind of starts to rotate around. Now is Alexander Illuminati's to control. Soon will cores disabled by Uplanders be disabled no longer. Reverse time. Giant gears start turning. Pistons moving up and down. Bolts of mechanical work. All the gobbies start celebrating. Once power flows to third core, Alexander will be fully operational, and with third core will its true potential awaken. Wings of time will unfurl, and all of history will be at mercy of Illuminati. Chosen ones will amend the mistakes of past and reshape world into perfection. At last, prophecies of Enigma Codex will be fulfilled. And quick thinks all thoughts will rule as king of new world, of correct world. Chosen ones, menders of history, be proud to serve as builders of this paradise. They all salute. And the 
Obviously, there appears to be a hand to basically the ear canal, one of the ear canals. That's their salute. They do got big old ears, so I guess that makes a little sense. Alright, let's speak to Wedge here. Yishto and the Chief have returned to Matoya's cave. Don't worry, between them, they're sure to find the answer to her problems. If it isn't waiting on a shelf in the Charlian Annals, all it'll be in some forgotten corner of the Chief's brain. You mark my words. And the next time we meet Quick Thinks, we'll be ready for him. Wedge, Biggs, walk off. Adventure, there is something I would like to discuss with you, but mayhap it would be best to wait until we are safely back at the shortstop. I will see you there. Why did you even make me leave? Oh, it's like right here. <laughs> like, why'd you make me go so far? It's like, it's like, oh, I can fly here. Oh, I forgot about that. I suppose I should start by apologizing for everything. Were it not for me, the Illuminati would never have summoned that infernal machine or gained the means to control it. And now Quick Things possesses the power to manipulate time, to foresee the future and erase the past. I dare not think how he will use it. Returning the cores to their former state was but a foretaste. Uh, when all three are active and Alexander can traverse both time and space, nothing will stand between the Illuminati and their twisted utopia. We cannot let it come. To, we cannot let it come to that, Mercy. Somehow we must find a way to stop them. But first, we must rescue Round Rocks. Of all the innocent victims of this sorry tale, her plight pains me the most. I would have to agree. Poor gal. The shortstop just isn't the same without her. I hope someone will keep her treasure safe until she returns. A gob in the machine. Alright, hopefully this is the last thing. The Coral and the Col Colossus. Ah, adventure! You come in an opportune moment. It would seem we have a visitor. I was pacing about, thinking of round rocks, when something in the shadows drew my eye. I caught only a brief glimpse, but it bore an uncanny resemblance to Quick Thinks's, Quick Thinks's constant companion. Shinoa, was it? If the coral's here, there's a good chance her Illuminati keepers are close by. We best track her down, and quickly, follow me. Even though I've got people I'm trying to chat with, I am dedicated to following this until the next um, read, which I've had to watch the video for. Alright, cutscene over here. There is the black cat. Just as I thought. It is Shinoa. Or is it? One coral kitten looks much, like the, much the same as another, and she doesn't seem to have brought any of her friends. Over there! Kitten goes running with the two of you, and... Uplanders! What are all these snap crashings and... <gasps> it's just a goblin laying on the ground. An Illuminati spy, sent by Quick Things to observe our movements. Like as not, given the sizable disadvantage at which we find ourselves, we thought it best to relieve him of duty, says Sid, and with the Ashola coming up. He spent his final moments babbling about all of the Illuminati's deranged schemes, claimed that once the final core was activated and Alexander fully operational, the fortress would gain the power to travel through time, taking them along with it. Everybody's shocked. He seemed quite convinced that Quick Thinks was a prophet of sorts, a traveler from the future come to, to the present to return history to its proper state. Aye, and that's not the half of it. According to him, the battle for history has already been won, and not by us. For the future is writ in the Enigma Codex, and we but play our, and we but play out our roles in it. Quick things, a traveler from the future, that could that would certainly explain how he was able to anticipate our every move. But could it be that he has already conquered the world of tomorrow? Have all of our efforts been in vain? Bah! Tongue flaps of crazed Illuminati, Illuminati make brain case hurt. Backrix would speak of different subject. What brings Uplanders back to shortstop? Having settled upon a plan of action, Sid and I were in the process of making our final preparations with Master Matoya when this kitten scampered in, mewing as if to beckon us. We duly followed her, and she led us here. 
much to the dismay of the fellow at our feet. I'm not the one to look a gift coral in the mouth, but something about all this doesn't sit right with me. She has been at Quick Thinks' side, make that on his bloody head, every step of the way, and now she decides to betray her neat care keepers? If the cat would speak our tongue, I would have a question or two for her, mayhap even three. Ugh, I can't believe I'm, I'm even considering this, but then it wouldn't be the strangest thing I've heard today. You there, cat, you're Shinoa. Quick Thinks is a little familiar, aren't you? Two mews for yeah, one for nay. Mew, mew! <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Stupid, I love it though. Did she truly? Do you want to go home? Mew. One for no. Seven hells, I think the bloody furball might actually understand us. But that doesn't mean we can trust her. For all we know, she could be here to do her master's dirty work. A moment, Uplanders. Tongue flaps of Round Rocks come to back Rex's brain case. Three years ago, when Round Rocks found Codex Splinterstone, Round Rocks says Black Coral Child is there, onlooking. Back Rex thinks nothing of this then, but now. You mean to imply that Shinoa here was present when we attempted the summoning? I very much doubt that. If she were a kitten three years ago, she would be a fully grown coral by now. Unless time was playing with her. Unless, that is, she took a shortcut through time. An implausible theory, I grant you, but one that we cannot well dismiss in light of recent events. If true, it would raise a still more troubling possibility that Round Rocks' discovery of the Codex was no mere coincidence, but an event orchestrated by Quick Things to further his own ends. Hmm. It's a lot of timey-wimey. <clears throat> oh, this just gets better and better. Look, whatever's going on here, we're not like to find out uh, find out by standing around talking. We need to delve deeper into that fortress. And as luck would have it, Wedge claims his latest invention will allow us to do just that. I've sent him and Biggs on ahead to the Maker's Quarters to perform their final tests. Uh, meet them there when you're ready. I'll join you as soon as my own preparations are complete. You're like, yeah, boss, I got this. So, so, word. The cat follows Backrix. Kind of like bouncing? I guess they don't understand. They, get, they didn't want to program cat movement. <laughs> Funny as fuck. To travel back in time and to set past wrongs aright. Who could resist such temptation? How grievous the consequences of surrendering to it. For in allowing the past to consume us, and making our every choice, our every action in the, the correct one, will we not cease to leave, live in the present and in turn lose sight of the future? This is a path not to redemption but to madness. But to madness. Oh, gosh, a lot of talking. Okay. I can fly, I can fly. I can show you the world. Shine, shine, splendor. Okay. Here's big switch. Day and snap clicks, who I don't really know very well. Aw, oh, mercy, all fired up and ready to go, are we? Then I'd, I'd best hurry up and brief you on the task at hand. In a nutshell, we'll, met, we'll be attacking the primal on two fronts. As we speak, Yashtol is leading an attempt to cut off the primal source of ether. Our job, meanwhile, will be to head into the belly of the beast and rescue young round rocks. Without her to view the Enigma Codex forum, the Illuminati won't be able to turn back time anymore, giving us a fighting chance of beating the bastards. The chief reckons that the shortest path is through the giant's great fat noggin, the only problem being that it's inside the barrier. Not to worry, though. Wedge's latest wonder will take care of that. He's dubbed it the BBG-2, which he tells me is short for Barrier Be Gone. Of course, the barrier doesn't just serve to keep folk out, it also keeps the primal in, that being why Mide and her mates raised the bleeding thing in the first place. So the moment it goes down, there'll be nothing to stop the Colossus from running rampant, if it has a mind to. Which means we're going to need to move fast. The chief will take the Excelsior in as close as he can to Alexander's head, where you'll jump off and secure us away inside. Wasting no time, you'll then climb back aboard, and Wedge will re-engage the barrier, all before our metal friend even knows what's happening. Got it? Good, because we've got our work to cut out for us. Let's get going. The Eyes of the Creator, now accessible. I gotta click one of the thing. Cool. Fucking finally. Alright. <laughs> this is... Done. All right. The E U R E 
o e u r l and the colossus cool all right yeah this video is done finally i'll see you guys next time maybe even today who knows bye bye for now